Good afternoon and welcome to In the Spotlight on Rampage TV. I'm your host, David Cunliffe, and I have a wonderful guest here today. His name is Kenny McCudden. Most, some of you may know him as the assistant coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets, but I guarantee you there's a couple thousand people across the nation who know him as Coach McCudden. So I want to introduce you to uh, my, my new friend, a great coach, great hockey man, Mr. Kenny McCudden. Thanks Kenny, thank much. you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much, David, for having me. Yeah, so Kenny, uh, you know, it's it's once again, it's it's an absolute pleasure to have you on here. Um, not not only are you a, a current assistant coach in the NHL, but you're also you're somebody who's who's lived so many hockey lives, touched so many lives, and uh, you know, I just kind of want to talk to you today about your experience. Uh, one of the first things I always love to ask is, uh, what is your first memory of hockey, or wh how did hockey come into your life? Well, first memory, uh, obviously. Being born and raised here in in Chicago, I think of Bobby Hull. I think of Stan Makita. I think of Tony Esposito right off the bat. Um, we didn't have as many slabs of ice as we do today back in the 60s when I was a kid. Uh, but uh, I think we've got uh, nearly 200 slabs of ice in Illinois today. I think roughly when I started off, there was about three to five. Uh, so, I mean, the game has grown uh, in a terrific way. But... Yeah, number 35, number 9, number 21 uh, on WGN uh, television here in Chicago and on WMAQ radio. I mean, I grew up with that and absolutely terrific uh, uh, days when it came to the Blackhawk days like that. And uh, uh, every kid was wearing a jersey and that's how I got involved in the park districts and uh, that type of thing. But uh, Chicago Blackhawk hockey was huge. Yeah, so uh, from my from my research, I understand your folks came over from Scotland in the fifties, and of course, that was a, a big time for the Blackhawks. So, you know, uh, did they have any sort of connection to hockey before coming over, or was it just, you know, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks just just being so big? Yeah, my father. Um, they both came from Glasgow, Scotland. So you did a great job of research, by the way, David. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So they. Um, they uh, they loved soccer, and uh, I think the closest thing to soccer for them uh, was the game of hockey. And I think my dad was uh, fancied by the sport, and you know, in a in a terrific way by the speed. And uh, once he saw the game of hockey, I mean, obviously never seen hockey back in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, he was able to relate with the transitional game of soccer and the game of hockey, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think he just took a liking to it so much and saw that I was playing it off the ice as far as street hockey and things like that uh, at four and five and six uh, with a stick in my hand. So uh, got me involved that way. And But, uh, yeah, he absolutely loved the game of hockey. Wonderful, wonderful. So he, you know, he... Uh, you know, my dad was kind of similar. Grew up in California. There was no hockey. But when the great one came out, that got him interested and uh, they started going to hockey games and... So, so you mentioned, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of folks who, who, you know, grew up on the East Coast where there maybe there wasn't so, or they lived in a town or an area where there wasn't so many rinks. Was uh, was street hockey? I mean, was that was that something that just, you know, a, a lot of a lot of folks did? Did that kind of generate, um, you know, I was talking to Lou Vero, you know, those sorts of leagues, the roller hockey leagues, they, they, they transitioned into ice. Is that something that that kind of happened for you or, or was it just you, you got so into hockey that that your dad was like, all right, let's put them out there. Well, no, you got to realize, I mean, just take those three guys that I just mentioned, those past three Blackhawks. Mm -hmm. Every kid wanted to, every kid admired those three, obviously. And uh, then you had a guy like Keith Magnus and a fiery redheaded defenseman that fought everybody throughout the National Hockey League. But you wore, you wore those jerseys playing street hockey. And uh, since we didn't have the ice, I mean, that's that, was, that became your ice rink, uh, playing ball hockey, whether it was with that orange ball or – a tennis ball, and uh, you uh, you you pretended you were down at Chicago Stadium. But those those players that I had mentioned, obviously, with the game being so big, that's where all the ice rinks started to be built. No different than on the East Coast, with you know, for instance, in Massachusetts with Bobby Orr in the late '60s, the rinks started being built in the early '70s in Massachusetts. So every kid was every kid there was playing street hockey the same exact way, but until Bobby Orr came along, but. You hit it on the head as far as on the West Coast, what Wayne Gretzky did to the to uh, the state of California, what he did to Colorado, uh, what he did to Seattle, what he did to everything out there in the West Coast, uh, Idaho, Montana, 
that's all due to Wayne Gretzky. So it's uh, absolutely amazing what uh, one player can do, a pass player, or what a group of players can do. Yeah, certainly. And uh, you know, you've you started with the Blackhawks at age seventeen. Uh, you know, just kind of helping around with the equipment and whatnot. Yeah. How, 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 how did that kind of come to me? Well, they practiced at the local rink that I was at. I mean, I started slugging bags for the Blackhawks like at 13, 14 years old. And okay. I guess I did a decent job at it. So uh, Louis Varg and Skip Thayer, which were legendary uh, trainers on the medical side and the equipment side, uh, took a liking to me, I guess. And uh, I always remember it being roped off, David, where hundreds of kids would be watching the Blackhawks come in. So, for instance, when Chicago Stadium was being used for the circus or uh, a concert, they practiced at my rink. It was called Franklin Park mm -hmm. Ice Arena. And uh, that's where a lot of opposing teams would practice, too. I saw the New York Rangers come in with Phil Esposito. Saw the Bruins come in with Bobby Orr. Uh, but when the Blackhawks practiced there an awful lot, I made sure I uh, <laughs> got out of school that day to watch the Blackhawks <laughs> practice. And uh uh, then I uh, wanted to le lend a helping hand in every way and be as close to the action as possible. And I think roughly around uh, 15 is when they really, really let me in the door. And by 16, uh, I was helping out a little bit uh, on the opposing side with the visitors down at Chicago Stadium. And then by 17, they brought me in full time and in into the dressing room with the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, that's, you know, what, what is it like going in at 17, lifting those bags, you know, even even younger as well? You know, is it, is it was it really intimidating or, or were those guys, uh, you know, accepting? Well, when you're in an atmosphere like that, you're talking back in those days. Today, for instance, like with the Columbus Blue Jackets, we, we have as many as I think seven trainers, maybe even eight between the medical side and the equipment side. Back in those days, I was the first third man. What that means is. There was only a medical trainer and an equipment manager. And I think at 18, 18 and a half, I became the first third man and, uh, in Chicago Blackhawks Hawk history, which, which means that you were down there full time being paid, uh, helping out. And uh, I thought I was going to make a career out of it as far as uh, on the training side. But uh, um, that, that only lasted for six years with the Blackhawks that way. And I went on to other things. But uh, uh, yeah, no, as far as uh, being part of that family, it started with uh, the Wirtz family. Uh, I, I saw Arthur Wirtz. I saw Bill Wirtz. I saw the, the, the kids when they were younger, Rocky Wirtz that runs it today. Uh, I saw Rocky as a young man, and I saw Peter Wirtz as a young man. And uh, uh, today, Rocky's son, Danny Wirtz, runs the Chicago Blackhawks. So um, I ran into Danny Wirtz uh, last summer at the draft and uh, uh, on the way uh, to the draft at O'Hare Airport. And I spoke about his uh, great-grandfather. And I think, uh, I think he was blown away that I was able to tell him about his great-grandfather because I don't believe he had ever met his great-grandfather. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I was part of that family. And uh, when guys bring you under their wing, uh, and in a way they want to teach you the ropes and uh, have accepted you, you grow up very, very fast. And I would have to say uh, by the time I was 18, I was probably really 28 or 30 years old by the time I grew up. And <laughs> you just can't uh, – you just can't uh, – you don't get that out of university. The old saying is mm -hmm. when uh, when you've lived a life like that, you've been around the block. Yeah. No, and certainly, and that, that's another thing I was reflecting on today while I was running some errands is, uh, you know, how how close this hockey community really can be. Because, you know, Sean, I, like I'm sure, you know, Sean took me under his wing a few years ago, and I, I genuinely feel like I've learned more from him in these, you know, three, four years than I have my whole year, my whole life playing. Um yeah. Well, but, this, uh, this interview, excuse me, this interview wouldn't be <laughs> happening unless it was Sean Hathaway no, uh, bringing absolutely. us together. And uh, um, Sean is a terrific hockey person. Uh, he's somebody that I admire in a terrific way. Uh, he kept a relationship going with the Aspen Leafs Hockey Club with myself uh, going. And that's where I was able to meet Sean. And uh, when Sean was director that, out with the Aspen Leafs, I, I've been working out there previously, but uh, when he got the job as director, he kept me on and uh, to work closely with Sean and uh, having uh, Sean's direction and me following his direction and working with his kids throughout that club. Uh, a tremendous hockey man. Uh, really, really great for the game. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it just, just a great human being as well. I'll, yes. I'll, fo I'll follow him anywhere he goes. You know? yes. And I, like, yeah, truthfully, I wouldn't be sitting here if, you know, we hadn't had a, a goofy conversation in St. Louis about setting up a, a hockey broadcast. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, he, he makes things happen. And thanks again to Sean for, for bringing us together. Um, another thing I wanted to point to, or to, to ask you about was that period between the Blackhawks and the Wolves where I, I understand you were working, you know, jobs basically like I work, just some, some blue collar, white collar jobs, just making ends meet. But uh, as I understand it, that, that you couldn't, couldn't get that hockey monkey off your back. Well, it's true. I mean, I, I got into the golf business and thought I was, uh, I worked for a, 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 a golf company called the Ram Golf Corporation out of Melrose Park, Illinois. And uh, they made gorgeous golf clubs. Uh, they had, you know, Jan Stevenson on the, on the LPGA side and then Tom Watson signed on the PGA tour side. And uh, yeah, I thought I was going to get into the golf business and try it out at least. And uh, I guess I like things that you can swing, whether it's a hockey stick or a golf club, but I uh, tried that out for a while and uh, tried out another sales job or, or two. And uh, you talk about the monkey on your back. It wasn't really the monkey on the back. It was uh, missing the locker room, whether you were a player, whether you're working in the Black Hawk locker room, uh, missing the camaraderie, bottom line, mm -hmm. missing the game of hockey. And uh, um, I was asked, uh, even I, I recall this, David, while I was working those jobs, I remember an awful lot of youth level parents asking me for privates. And uh, uh, so I started dabbling in the private uh, sector of the game of hockey and giving privates. And then that led on to the big, big uh, uh, job that got me back into the game of hockey is when a 10 year NHL vet uh, by the name of Grant Mulvey, we're number 22 with the Blackhawks. He wanted to go into business with me and uh, he liked that I was born and raised and played out of Illinois. Uh, he was the sizzle as the NHL star with the Chicago Blackhawks. And we started off in 1989 together. Uh, I remember this, giving our time to uh, many youth level organizations throughout Illinois, giving our time because we knew that we can teach. We knew that we had credibility. We knew what we can bring to the table. And uh, we did that for a year. Uh, we literally went out the door seven days a week throughout the hockey season from September through May um, for zero dollars just to be able to get our school and get our names off the ground. And, uh, that's what really, really opened up the door for me again. Uh, so 1989, uh, led into 90 where we went, went right into a rink. And, um, what we did differently, David, is we taught throughout the year. So for instance, we weren't just a summer hockey school. We were a clinic from September through May, we went into mm. hockey organizations and we taught their power skating. We taught their skill work and it was a hit. We were sold out. We were sold out every single week, uh, every single day and every single year. And um, that's, that was the real break that led even within one year working with Chicago Blackhawk players with power skating and skill development in, in 1990. So it's amazing when, uh, you follow your dream or stay with something that you you believe in and you have a love for. Um, sometimes it becomes your life, not just your craft. Yeah. Um, we re realized we had a business basically overnight, but no, you uh, um, you get into you get into it to become you know a teacher. You become you become a coach, and uh, that line of uh, when you're a teacher, you touch a life forever. Well, there's no different the, the difference between a teacher, an educator, and a coach. Sometimes a coach is sometimes uh, uh, one of the most influential uh, people in somebody's life uh, because they may not be getting that 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 kind of uh, uh, educational process from back home. They just may not have a great great home, and sport is a great avenue. And a coach or a group of coaches are the ones that help that uh, kid out whether it's a girl or whether it's a boy. So no, we never, we never went into it for, for the money, but uh, um, you, you find out that uh, if you are good at it and you're, there's a draw and um, I always believe that uh, uh, you become good at something from, from word of mouth. Um, I mean, it, it has to probably fall into so many businesses when people are successful I think it's just because of word of mouth that they they trust you as a coach. 
They like you as a coach. They know what you bring. They think it's worth the money. Uh, but I remember when we first started off, I mean, uh, uh, we, were, we were charging kids for a whole week to be with us, $25 per kid just every time they stood on the ice with us. And they might be on the ice four times with us. Well, if you do the math, that's pretty cheap. And we weren't getting rich from it. So there is something to say about what you were saying. You don't get in, into it that way and um, uh, for, for the money. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think today it's changed, David, in a lot of ways. I mean, there's uh, so many resources out there today. Um, and there's so many people that paved the way for people like me, even back in the 60s, uh, that were incredible people. But they, they there weren't many of them. Today, that's a different story. You look at any state throughout the Illinois, or I should say any state throughout the country, from Illinois all the way through to Colorado, um, the resources for kids to learn how to skate, the, the resources to, to be able uh, to go to a shooting clinic, a stick handling clinic, every, you know, there, it was never, never like that when I was a kid. So the resources have became so much greater uh, in every single hockey club and in every single state.